If you are curious about the inner workings of ChatGPT, the innovative language model developed by OpenAI, your search ends here. In this video, I'll clarify the process and take you on a journey through the key stages involved in its operation such as data collection, training, fine-tuning and evaluation. And I hope this will help anyone in enhancing and expand their knowledge in AI technology. Now in my previous video, I discussed the growing popularity of ChatGPT, Microsoft's plan for it and its real-world applications. And now it's time to see how ChatGPT works. So sit back and get ready to learn the inner workings of ChatGPT. GPT, it is a type of language model developed by the organization OpenAI. You will keep hearing the term language model a lot. A language model is basically a computer program that helps us to understand and generate language, just like we do, and it trains to predict the next word given in a sequence of words, which means it can read words and sentences and make sense of what they mean, and then it can also make up new sentences. GPT-2 is the original GPT model. There is no GPT-1 if you are wondering. And GPT-3 is the latest release and the largest version of GPT model yet. ChatGPT-3 is also a language model, which is a fine-tuned variant of GPT-3. ChatGPT was fine-tuned specifically for conversational language generation. That is how we humans communicate with each other when we are having a conversation. But OpenAI is not the only company out there. Just like GPT developed by OpenAI, there are several other variants developed by other companies. We have BERT developed by Google, Robot A developed by Facebook AI, which they claim to be an improved version of BERT, Elmo developed by Allen Institute for AI, Umfed developed by FastAI, and Google's AI Lambda, language model for dialogue applications. It's a language model developed by Google that is designed to generate human-like conversation. But more on that in my future video. Now the choice of which model to use depends on the specific requirements and constraints of the task. For example, ChatGPT was developed for conversational language generations. Now for each of these computer programs or language models such as ChatGPT to be able to read words or generate sentences that make sense, they all need to be trained. Training a GPT style language model like ChatGPT involves several stages. The first stage involves collecting a large corpus of text data to train the model on. This can come from various sources such as books, websites, or even social media such as TikTok. The collected data is then pre-processed, which involves cleaning up the data and converting it into a format suitable for training the model. This may involve removing unwanted characters, converting text to lowercase, and tokenizing, that is splitting the text into smaller units such as words or subwords. The next stage is to define the model architecture. Now, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. All GPT style models are based on the transformer architecture. Defining the architecture is a very important step and I may deep dive in the transformer architecture in my future videos. But for now, just know that in this stage, we fine tune the architecture design specifically for processing sequences of data such as text. The architecture design has a significant impact on the model's performance and efficiency. The model is then trained on the pre-processed text data using process known as supervised learning. And during this stage, the model is presented with the input text and the desired output, and then it adjusts its biases to minimize the difference between its prediction and the actual output. This process is repeated for many thousands of iterations until the model has learned to generate outputs that closely match the desired output. For example, during the training stage, the model would be presented with the input text, what is the capital of France? And the desired output, Paris is the capital of France. The model would then use the input-output pair to update its biases in an effort to generate an output that matches the desired output as closely as possible. The process would be repeated with thousands or even millions of other input-output pairs, allowing the model to learn from diverse range of data and build up a rich understanding of the language and relationships between different words and phrases. Now during pre-training, the ChatGPT model is trained on a large corpus of text data from various sources such as books, articles, websites, and social media. This provides the model with a wide range of information, making it capable of generating diverse outputs. For fine-tuning, a subset of this data is then selected based on the specific domain the model is being fine-tuned for. For example, if the goal is to fine-tune the model for a customer service chatbot, then the dataset containing customer service queries and responses would be used. The model would then be trained on this similar set of data, allowing it to better understand and generate outputs that are specific to the customer service domain. 
Here is at a high level how the fine tuning process looks like. You first choose a pre-trained language model that is suitable for the specific domain or task you want to fine tune for. And then it collects a data set that is specific to the domain or task you want to fine tune for. In the data processing stage, you further pre-process this fine-tuned data by cleaning and tokenizing. And then you train the pre-selected model on the fine-tuning data using a suitable optimizer. Finally, the model is evaluated on a held-out test set to determine its performance. It's like giving a test to a student to see how well they have learned the material and to identify their strengths and weaknesses. The results of this evaluation are then used to make any improvements to the model and to further refine its performance and accuracy. And once the evaluation is complete, the model is ready to answer our prompt, that is, generating response. Let us look at the basic steps involved in answering a prompt. The prompt or user query is received as an input text. For example, what is the capital of France? And then the input text is screened to check for any inappropriate or harmful content. If the content is found to be inappropriate, the process ends here and a rejection message is sent back to the user. Otherwise, the input text is then tokenized. That is, it is converted into a sequence of tokens where each token represents a word or a symbol. So in this case, the input text is tokenized into what is the capital of France? Question mark. The next stage is model inference, which itself contains of many other stages. But at a high level, it first does the input encoding. That is, the tokens are encoded into numerical format suitable for input into the model. And then the tokenized input is fed into the chat GPT model, which uses its pre-trained knowledge to generate a response. And finally, the model decodes it, meaning the model selects the output with the highest probability as the answer. The generated response is screened again to check for any inappropriate or harmful content. If the content is found to be inappropriate, the process ends here and a rejection message is sent back to the user. Otherwise, the final generated response after passing content moderation is returned to the user. ChatGPT is a remarkable example of the advancements in the field of AI and machine learning. Understanding the various stages of ChatGPT's working process, from pre-processing and tokenization to decoding and language generation, helps us appreciate the complexity and sophistication of this tool. As the technology continues to evolve, we can expect ChatGPT to become even more capable and widely used in various industries. Whether you are using it for customer service, text completion, coding, or just for fun, ChatGPT is a tool that is sure to impress and is a strong contender to shape the future of AI and language processing.